Hello YouTubers, today's video is an introduction to Knockout, which is a front-end JavaScript library. In this video, we will be discussing the history, benchmarking, going through a website tutorial, why to use it, where to use it, advantages and disadvantages, companies, and licensing. So, the history was created by Steven Sanderson. His first release was the 5th of July 2010, and he started work at Microsoft in November 2010. So, it is not a Microsoft product. So, for benchmarking, I found this great tutorial written by Chris Harrington which compares the performance of Knockout versus Angular, React, and Raw DOM manipulation. What he did was, he generated a list of a thousand items that get rendered into a UL tag. So now we're going to actually go to his demo. Okay, I'm going to just refresh. So you can hit run on all of these. You can go there and click yeah, and yeah, and yeah. And you'll notice that Knockout is the slowest. So you shouldn't use Knockout to generate large sets of data in a website. Knockout tutorials. Yeah. Welcome. In this first tutorial, you'll experience some of the basics of building a web UE with the model view view model pattern using Knockout.js. Um, you can also call it the model view binder specifically for um, libraries like Knockout.js because it's not related to the .NET framework. MVVM relies on MVC. Uh, it's derived from MVC, sorry. Okay, so you'll learn how to define a user interface appearance using views and declarative bindings. It's data and behavior using view models and observables, and how everything stays in sync automatically thanks to Knockout's dependency tracking even with arbitrary cascading change of data. Yeah, using bindings in the view. In the bottom right corner, ding, 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 you've got a view model containing data about a person. In the top right corner, you've got a view that's supposed to display the person's data. Yay. Right now, it just pays to do. So let's fix that. Modify the strong elements in the view, adding data bind attributes to display the person's name. Okay, so this is how we do it. Data bind equals text first name. So you can see that over here as the first name, which is Bert. Data bind text last name. And that's Bertington. Okay, <laughs> so data bind attributes or how Knockout lets you declaratively associate view models properties with DOM elements. You just use the text binding to assign text to your DOM elements. So, okay, so you can get other forms of binding. Okay, we're gonna run the code and we will be surprised. Oh, it is Bert Bertington. Okay, you can, you can carry on further. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description and it explains in more detail so it will also expand the namespace which is ko so ko actually gets used which is very exciting and there's a function to apply the bindings and you have an app view model object usage by top 10,000 sites um so its popularity slowly built up and then just went on a spike um i i checked the version at at that point around that point and uh, it's basically version 3.1 in when it was in beta that there were so many more websites using it. I, I use this website. Uh, it's called builtwith.com. I'll leave a link in the description. And it, it shows you websites that use this technology and you can ask for React and you can ask for Angular and then they would give you the list of companies that actually use that. Why use it? It updates the UE when data model changes. Elegant dependency tracking. So what we did was we just did a text now, but if you do like an input and you type something in, it will also update that same name thing if, if you if you continue with the tutorial it will show you that so it does update immediately it has declarative bindings and it connects part of your ue to your data model 
So that was like first name and it connected to the data bindings inside Knockout's script. Okay, and then less coding. Saves time. Instead of creating Ajax calls, you can just attach observables to your view model. So basically what this means is no more unchanged calls. And it, it will run every time you need it to. So as you can see, uh, is it gets used a lot more for things that change on a page. So Knockout would really be useful for forms, things that need to change and get updated immediately. So where do you use it? In small web applications or small web pages. And um, it works well with MVC because it's based off of an MVVM pattern. And this is just a reminder. So yeah, we had our, our HTML on the left and on the right we have the JavaScript. Now, advantages. Um, it uses a pure JavaScript library, so you don't need anything else other than that. There's no major architectural changes. It's around 13 kilobytes after zipping it, so it's small. Uh, works on any mainstream browsers, and it works well with CoffeeScript. And uh, now disadvantages. It doesn't work on large data sets, and it, it needs a mapping plugin. So, companies that use it, we have the Visual Studio website, Bing, Rolling Stone, these are all websites, Stack Overflow, Salisbury, Windows, Cabela's, Gap, Ancestry.com, Dell, and USA Today. There's many more, as I've said, you can just look at that um, built with website, and it's got all of the different companies that use it. And it's uh, based off of MIT licensing. And that is Knockout, a front-end JavaScript library.